Hello and welcome to the Tahmina Rizvi podcast. Today we are celebrating India's independence of 76 years and greetings to the viewers on this Independence Day. We are honored to have here with us Lieutenant General Syed Atta Hasnain, who is a retired general of Indian Army, Corps Commander Chinar Corps, has served as Chancellor Central University of Kashmir and currently serving as member National Disaster Management Authority. Thank you so much sir for being here with us today. Thank you very much and I wish to also greet you with a happy Independence Day and Thank all you. our viewers too. Thank you so much sir. So uh, f- my first question to you is since you have served in Kashmir for the longest time do you think western media or other organizations try to portray Kashmir in a particular way or they try to change the narrative altogether? Yeah, it's interesting sawal. And I would say that uh, I don't think the international media or the international community at large has really ever bothered to understand Jammu and Kashmir. Hmm. uh they were understood it from a perfunctory level but perhaps never gone to the depths of it and uh, maybe they are not at fault either because we have perhaps not taken enough pains to explain it to people to mera to kehna ye hai ke zyada tar western media or western international community abhi bhi kashmir ko un resolution ke prism se dekhti hai aur har waqt yahi sawal karti hai ke bharat jo hai why don't we allow a plebiscite to be conducted not realizing that the un resolution is history 1972 mein shimla agreement sign hua hmm. dono deshon ne agree kiya that we are going to sit together and resolve this problem bilaterally and therefore the un has nothing to do with it and the un also virtually accepted that formally shayad un resolution withdraw nahi hua magar on a on a working level that is the situation which is there the international community has to understand this yeah, there is a thing called the shimla agreement and unfortunately pakistan has resigned on it and that they have gone back on it and they are trying to refocus on the un resolution which is not the manner in which it should be looked at today at all to main samajhta hu ki hame bharat ko kuch aur zyada isme efforts karni padengi to explain our situation and position uh, to the international community So uh, we have come a long way when today we are sitting here celebrating 76 years of independence India has come a long way in terms of achievements so um, do you think there are some flagship flagship schemes in defense as well which are very crucial for India's future I think on this 76th independent day this is a very crucial question because uh, I would sp- basically talk from a from a security and national security angle hmm. and from that and particular i would focus on the fact that some very very transformational decisions have been taken in the last couple of years hmm. among them is this whole issue of atmanirbharta hmm. self reliance you see when uh, the current government came into power uh, it was estimated that india needs at least about 150 to 200 billion dollars worth of a uh, modern equipment to transform itself <coughs> to a modern set of uh, armed forces ab hum par depend karta tha ya to ab 150 billion 200 billion dollar lekar we go to an international market and purchase all this equipment and give the benefit of that purchase to other nations rather than that what the current government has correctly thought about is that why not do manufacturing khud kyun nahi hum manufacture karte hain so that it increases employment and the money which we are putting into it is recirculated within our own economy hmm. which is the most rational way of thinking but the only problem is that is clearly technology is chahiye aapko aur humne shayad research and development ke upar itna zyada invest nahi kiya hmm. shuru mein although we did invest but it did not come good to that extent to jab transformation ki baat aati hai is not a question of bringing in some dated technologies it has to be future technology इसको अब अपनाया है वेरी स्ट्रॉन्गली विद सम वेरी बोल्ड डिसीजन बैन हैज बिन पुट ऑन द इम्पोर्ट ऑफ सर्टन डिफेंस आइटम्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल कि ये इनको हम लाएंगे ही नहीं भारत में वी विल मैनुफैक्चर इट चाहे कोई क्वालिटी हो वी विल इनहांस दैट क्वालिटी ओवर प्रोग्रेसिवली ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो दैट्स वेयर आत्मनिर्भरता इज टूडे बट अलॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव एक्सपेक्टेशन एज इफ दिस इज समथिंग विच 
can achieve results overnight. Overnight. This is one of the longest, uh, you know, it goes through a very long transformative period, hmm. Atmanir Bharta, because research and development, bringing it down to manufacturing, uh, having the capability to do that manufacturing and then distributing it and learning how to use it. That's the entire process that you have to go through. So, I think this is one of the very important things. But we are likely to adopt it very soon. Recently, the parliament has just passed a bill on uh, national security, uh, on the issue of the inter-services uh, cooperation as such. Mm -hmm. a, this is exactly on the lines that America was in 1986. Mein. Goldwater Nichols Act to pass what I just say US Armed Forces combined together to form what is called a theater concept. Now hmm. theater concept Bharat mein bhi hai. Bharat. We are getting it. And uh, we are likely to see three new theaters in the near future: Northern Theater, Western Theater, and uh, the Maritime Theater. Is me Jitini forces hai wahan, Army, Navy, Air Force, Jitini Navy, hai, Coast Guard, hmm. all of them will come under one joint command. एक थिएटर के नीचे आएंगे और एक थिएटर कमांडर जो किसी का भी हो सकता है आर्मी नेवी एयर फोर्स का हो सकता है डिपेंडिंग ऑन इट्स कैपेबिलिटी सो इससे के दिस इज द मॉडर्न वे ऑफ वॉर फाइटिंग पूरी दुनिया में आजकल थिएटराइजेशन के ऊपर वो है चर्चा हो रही है चाइना ने इसको अडॉप्ट किया है अमेरिका ने तो बहुत पहले अडॉप्ट किया था इसको अब हम इसको अपना रहे हैं Hmm. So, uh, while we are talking about achievements, there are also certain abrasions within the society which makes the process altogether very challenging. I am talking in reference of the Manipur incident. What do you think uh, how a country should behave in that position and also what is the way forward? Look, if we talk about Manipur, one gets politically uh, painted by, by it. Hmm. So, I will restrict myself to what I have to say. मैं तो ये कहूँगा मैंने इस पर रिसेंटली लिखा भी है कि किसी भी सोसाइटी में और हम हम मल्टी एथनिक सोसाइटी हैं मल्टी फेथ मल्टी लैंग्वेज अलग अलग मध्य कास्ट हर किस्म की डाइवर्सिटी है भारत में यूनिटी इन डाइवर्सिटी तो हमारा मुद्दा है पूरा कहीं ना कहीं तो अनबन होती है इस तरह की इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ हाउ यू मैनेज इट और जब ये अनबन थोड़ा हद से ज़्यादा बन जाती बढ़ जाती है एंड इट लीड्स टू इंटरसीन वायलेंस बिटवीन पीपल तो सोल्यूशन निकालने से पहले मैं समझता हूँ स्टेबलाइज करना बहुत ज़रूरी होता है मणिपुर में अभी जो हो रहा है इस वक्त मैं समझता हूँ कि द टाइम इज़ कम फॉर अस टू वर्क टूवर्ड्स स्टेबलाइजिंग दिस ब्रिंग पीस दुनिया में कोई ऐसी सिचुएशन नहीं है जहाँ पर लोग वापस नहीं आ सकते हैं कम बैक टू द टू वॉट दे वेयर एंड देन लुक फॉर सोल्यूशन वायलेंस अपसेट्स अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग बट If you look for peace and if there's an absence of violence, people tend to come together, talk to each other. I think human beings' ki sabse badi cheez ye hoti hai ki they can talk to each other. Unlike mm. animals who mm. cannot talk to each other, mm. we can talk to each other and settle our differences. So I think that in Manipur, we should be more concerned about this. How can we stabilize this? How can we bring peace to the displaced? How can we bring them back? How can we make peace committees? How can we make economics? जिससे एस्पिरेशंस बढ़ते हैं लोगों के ये इकोनॉमिक्स के ऊपर बहुत जोर दिया जाए और वहाँ पर जो सिक्योरिटी के कुछ इश्यूज हैं जैसे इन्फिल्ट्रेशन है या जो म्यांमार से होता है या ड्रग्स का मैनेस है क्योंकि ये गोल्डन ट्रायंगल का इलाका है कम्बोडिया म्यांमार थाईलैंड के आसपास का इलाका है तो इसकी वजह से ड्रग्स का भी बहुत की बहुत अहमियत होती है यहाँ पर तो उसको कैसे न्यूट्रलाइज किया जाए so if you can identify some of these parameters or inke upar zor de instead of looking at finding a permanent solution jo aasani se nahi nikalta hai jab ye stabilization ho jayega then we can look towards a resolution hmm. adding to the question of achievements uh, of the flagship uh, flagship schemes uh, i would really like to know what are your views on 100% electrification of up alhabad network line i'm specifically asking you this question because you're somebody who is from alhabad and has been in nainital and have also served in gadwal rifles so what is your view on the up uttarakhand network line railway network line yeah देखिए रेलवेज इज ए ग्रेट बाइंडर यूनिफायर ये आप कश्मीर में भी देख रहे हैं कि अब उम्मीदें बढ़ रही हैं जब 
ट्रांसपीर पंजाल कनेक्शन जब हो जाएगा वहाँ पर तो दिल्ली से बारामूला एक ही कोच में बैठकर आदमी जा पाएगा दैट्स गोइंग टू बी एन अमेजिंग अचीवमेंट एब्सोल्युटली एंड दैट टू माय माइंड इज द ग्रेटेस्ट इंटीग्रेशन फॉर जम्मू एंड कश्मीर उसी तरीके से यूपी एक बहुत बड़ा स्टेट है उत्तरखंड जिससे मैं बहुत मेरा बहुत नाता है मेरी रेजिमेंट भी वहाँ की है गढ़वाल राइफल्स मैं पढ़ा भी नैनीताल में हूँ तो और हैं जैसे आपने कहा प्रयागराज इलाहाबाद का रहने वाला हूं मैं सो आई हैव अ इंटरेस्ट इन ऑल दिस एरिया कंप्लीट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विश द पीपल ऑफ बोथ दी स्टेट्स वेरी वेल एंड आई विश द लीडरशिप्स इन बोथ दी स्टेट्स दे आर डूइंग अ वंडरफुल जॉब एंड आई होप दिस कंटिन्यूज द वे इट हैज गॉन ऑन हैविंग सेड दिस देखिए इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन से एक तो ऑफकोर्स यूपी के अंदर इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन स्टार्ट अ लॉन्ग टाइम अ गो एंड it has finally been achieved completely as far as the lines are concerned up desh ka ek central rajya hai jiske wajah se connectivity ke wajah se thoda ahmiyat aur badhti hai kyunki east west kabhi kabhi north south bhi kafi connectivity jo hai wo isi zariye nikalti hai uttarakhand ki baat ye hai ke it is hugely dependent so far on road infrastructure ab jo hai hum dekh rahe hain towards uh, looking at electrification in terms of railway infrastructure ye jab aayega jab jab complete ho jayega just completed as you say it is it will help reach out to people it will help in tourism to a great extent it will help in business ye jo hai this is or besides being a unifier of people this is also a great facilitator of the economy always railway se har cheez jo hai economy mein bahut izafa hota hai so i think that is the biggest contribution that this is going to make to both these states uh, as far as electrification is concerned uh, you are currently serving as member national disaster management authority do you think uh, the response of indian army to natural cal- calamities is something which is not much talked about and also um, what is india's um, you know when we talk about disaster management uh, can you shed some light on india's surging disaster management capability जी हाँ मैं आपका सेकंड सवाल पहले लेता हूँ सर्जिंग जो बिल्कुल सही आपने कहा सर्जिंग कैपेबिलिटी जमाना था जब 1999 में जब थोड़ा सा सुपर साइक्लोन के वी लॉस्ट ओवर 10,000 फेटिलिटीज वी हैड गुजरात अर्थक्वेक में ये हुआ था सुनामी में भी ये हुआ था 2004 में हमारा तरीका था उस वक्त के वी यूज टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू एवरी डिजास्टर वी टू वेट फॉर अ डिजास्टर टू हैपन ये आपदा आ गई तहलका मच गया डिस्ट्रक्शन हो गया लाइफ हैव बीन लॉस्ट एंड देन वीज टू रिस्पॉन्ड एंड जो कुछ हो सकता है हो जाए उसके बाद एज अगेंस्ट दिस इंटरनेशनली द डॉक्टर इन वो ऑलवेज वॉज वाई नॉट प्रिपेयर फॉर द डिजास्टर तैयारी करिए आप ट्रेनिंग करिए आप फोर्सेज ऐसी रखिए जो ट्रेन है इसके लिए टेक्नोलॉजीज आपके पास होनी चाहिए मिटिगेशन करिए ताकि अगर कोई जबरदस्त तूफान आ रहा है तो आप पहले से तैयारी करके रखिए जो लोग ऐसे अकोमोडेशन में रह रहे हैं झोपड़ियों में रह रहे हैं उनको निकाल के वहाँ से सीमेंटेड कंक्रीट घरों के अंदर रखिए रोड जो आपकी बिजली का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है सब उड़ जाता है ऑल योर टेलीफोन केबल्स गेट अपरूटेड व्हाई नॉट पुट ऑल दिस अंडरग्राउंड ताकि इसी से मिटिगेशन हो जाए अब इसका पूरा असर जो है मैं इससे पहले के असर की बात करूँ मैं कहूँगा ये दो में Uh, या उससे पहले भी अगर आप देखें तो 2005 में नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एक्ट को एनैक्ट किया गया उससे तीन चीज़ें हुई एक तो एन डी एम ए नेशनल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट अथॉरिटी को खड़ा किया गया एक नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट खड़ा हुआ NIDM. जो एन जो जो इसका नॉलेज एलिमेंट hmm. uh, है और तीसरा नेशनल डिजास्टर रिस्पॉन्स फोर्स एन को खड़ा किया जिसकी सोलह यूनिटें हैं आज I think this was the finest decisions we took, and it has only progressed by leaps and bounds. 2016, me, माने प्रधानमंत्री ने एक रखा एक adopted a a program which is called the Ten Point Agenda for Disaster Management. ये ministerial conference थी, Asian ministerial conference थी 2016 में उसके अंदर उन्होंने ये रखा इसको. Today, that Ten Point program जो बहुत चीजों को देखता है. नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट को टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलपमेंट को रिस्पॉन्स को मिटिगेशन को एज एंड गोइंग टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ इवन लुकिंग एट जेंडर 
in in the gender sensitivity which is necessary hmm. in disaster situations which okay, had never are, been looked at may, mostly women hmm. and children hmm. who suffer the maximum hmm. this. so this was a i think this was a game changer and uh, internationally isko adopt kar rahe hain bahut se desh isko adopt kar rahe hain india hamare liye to mantra ban gaya hai aaj aur sabse acha iska natija agar aap dekhein तो इस साल बिपर जॉय जो ये अभी रिसेंट साइक्लोन आया है गुजरात में इसमें ज़ीरो फेटिलिटी हुई है क्योंकि हमारा नेशनल जो साइक्लोन रिस्क मिटिगेशन प्रोग्राम है उसके मुताबिक शेल्टर बने हैं लोगों को अपनी जगहों से लेकर इन शेल्टरों के अंदर रखा है प्री डिस्पोज फोर्सेज हैं आर्मी को रखा है एन को रखा है सबको रखा है हमने टेक्नोलॉजीज़ को लाया है और सबसे बढ़िया चीज़ के अभी रिसेंटली अपनाया हुआ एक तरीका है संचेत एक ऐप है जो आप डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं अपने मोबाइल पे उस पर हम आपको वार्निंग्स देते हैं कि आप उस इलाके में अगर हैं जहाँ पर कोई डिजास्टर होने वाला है आपदा आने वाली है तो कैसे आप चेतावनी उसको आपको चेतावनी देते हैं कि आप कैसे इसके बारे में ख्याल रखिए ताकि यू कैन एंश्योर दैट यू कैन हैव अ सेविंग ऑफ लाइव एंश्योर योर सेविंग ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी एंड योर लाइवलीहुड एट्सेट्रा इसको कॉमन अलर्टिंग प्रोटोकॉल नाम का की एक टेक्नोलॉजी है इसको अपनाया है इस तरह से बहुत से ऐप्स और हैं मार्केट में आप देखेंगे ऑन द इंटरनेट सचेत सचेत तो ये है एक है दामिनी विच इज फॉर लाइटनिंग बिजली गिरती है बहुत लोग हिंदुस्तान में जानते नहीं कि बिजली के जरिए कितने लोगों की मौत होती है तो इट इज टू वॉर्न यू अगेंस्ट लाइटनिंग स्ट्राइक इन सर्टन to come back to your first question on the aspect of the army um uh, disaster management act or ndrf ke raise karne ke baad specialized uh, jo uh, wo hai aapda uh, prabandhan uh, uh, disaster management jo hai wo ndrf ke hath mein hai aaj magar uh, without the indian army without the central armed police forces i don't think we can ever achieve uh, hmm. a very efficient uh, डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट क्योंकि दूर दराज इलाकों में खासतौर पर उत्तराखंड के इलाकों में कश्मीर के इलाकों में इट इज आर्मी आई टी बी पी ये जो लगे हैं वहाँ पर तो जब रिस्पॉन्स की जरूरत होती है तो एन डी आर एफ तो थोड़ा देर में पहुँचता है वो टेक्निकल और अपनी स्पेशलाइज रिस्पॉन्स लाता है मगर जो ऑन द स्पॉट होता है वो वो यही फोर्सेज होती हैं और उससे और बढ़िया चीज़ जो अब अपनाई है सरकार ने एन डी एम ए ने इट इज़ कॉल्ड आपदा मित्र तीन लाख आपदा मित्र बनाए जा रहे हैं फ्रेंड्स इन डिजास्टर ये कम्युनिटी वाले हैं जो वहीं पर जहां पर आपदा आ रही है वहीं पर मौजूद हैं अब रिसेंटली बारासौर एक्सीडेंट जो ट्रेन एक्सीडेंट था उसमें देखिए कि सबसे पहला रिस्पांस जो है वो आपदा मित्रों ने किया स्टेट के एस ने किया स्टेट डिजास्टर रिस्पॉन्स फोर्स ने किया तो इसकी वजह से मैं समझता हूँ कि इट इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन अ रेवोल्यूशन टेकिंग प्लेस इन इंडिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट और ये सिर्फ आगे ही बढ़ सकता है इट कैन यू ओनली गो बेटर एंड बेटर सर कमिंग टू योर पर्सनल लाइफ समथिंग विच आई वॉज वेरी इम्प्रेस्ड ऑफ आई रिसेंटली हर्ड वन ऑफ योर पॉडकास्ट वेर यू मैंशन योर पेरेंट्स लव स्टोरी एंड शेयर सम एनेकडोट्स दैट दे हैड विटनेस्ड अ लव स्टोरी इन बिटवीन पार्टिशन कैन यू प्लीज टेल अस मोर अबाउट इट लोग तो आज सामने थक गए हैं उस कहानी को सुनकर आई थिंक तो मैं बहुत ब्रीफली आपको बताऊंगा सर ये था कि पार्टीशन के वक्त पार्टीशन से पहले तीन साल पहले मेरे पेरेंट्स का एंगेजमेंट हो चुका था एंड माय मदर वाज फ्रॉम सोफिया कॉलेज अजमेर माय फादर वाज इन द आर्मी सेम रेजिमेंट एज मी गढ़वाल राइफल्स लड़ाई सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर से वापस आए थे और उनकी यूनिट पेशावर में थी और माई मदर वॉज इन अजमेर जब एकदम से पार्टीशन हो गया so my mother's family moved to peshawar because my grandfather got a job as the principal of the government college there and my father's unit moved from peshawar and came to saharanpur ab darar aa gayi beech mein so it was impossible for them to get married because there was no hmm. movement which was taking place at that time so the story actually the fun of the story is that uh, the the decision was either they couldn't break the engagement or find some means by which my father could go there and bring her back uh, marry her and my mother and bring her back to unke ceo ne yahan par unko delhi mein bheja yahan jo area commander the jantara singh bal aur unko likha ek chitthi likhkar kaha ki bhai inki madad kariye aap 
और बड़े ज़बरदस्त जनरल साहब थे उन्होंने उनके बहुत से दोस्त थे मित्र थे वहाँ पाकिस्तान आर्मी में और लड़ाई चल रही थी इस वक्त द वॉर वॉज ऑन एट दिस टाइम एंड डिस्पाइट दैट दॉज टॉक गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन वेरियस पीपल बिकॉज दे वॉज इट वॉज स्टिल अर्ली टाइम्स आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस सो जल तारा सिंह बल टू कैन अश्योरेंस फ्रॉम मेनी ऑफ इज फ्रेंड्स दे सीनियर ऑफिसर्स इन द पाकिस्तान आर्मी के आई एम सेंडिंग ए आर्मी ऑफिसर फ्राम हेयर ही इज़ अ मुस्लिम डोंट स्टॉप हिम ही हैज़ टू गेट मैरिड एंड ब्रिंग हिज वाइफ बैक सो दिस होल प्रोसेस टुक ऑलमोस्ट अ ईयर और मोर एंड यू कैन इमेजिन द कैंड ऑफ टेंशन इन माई फादर्स लाइफ एट दैट टाइम एंड ही वॉज द एजुटेंट ऑफ इज यूनिट द एजुटेंट ऑफ ए यूनिट इज द is the core center he is the main person after the commanding officer who handles everything inside the unit but it's uh, because of the friendship of all the officers that he had the men who loved him the subedar major who respected him so much that all the support came his way and of course then jan tara singh bal coming to his support to help him even purchase the tickets to go by air from here to rawalpindi move to peshawar get married to my mother and bring her back and uh, my mother could never go back ever to see her family again my grandfather did visit once only to come and see us i don't remember seeing my grandfather ever and this is the story that's uh, really uh, heartening to hear i mean you have not seen your grandfather ever <laughs> but uh, while we are discussing the love and syncretic culture india has um i i would like to specifically mention that you have also previously mentioned um, in your tweets and otherwise that while you were serving in gadwal rifles in your regiment uh, jay uh, badri vishal used to be a war cry sort of in your regiment have you ever shied away calling it out loud and also adding another question you can decide to answer it uh, separately uh, I saw one of your tweets where um, one Kashmiri pandit has shared an eighth Muharram procession from Kashmir, and you wrote that it's time for you to visit the Sharda Temple in Titwal. And so, while we are discussing all of this, what what are your views on India's syncretic culture, and how do you ensure it in your daily life? So let me answer your second question first. It's a very very interesting question. How am I involved with the Sharda Peet and? Uh, this whole process of this temple coming up at uh, Tithwal there is this gentleman called ravinder pandita kashmiri pandit and he had come to me and we had discussed and he had you had always got a lot of respect for my syncretic way of looking at things the return of the kashmiri pandits which i always was felt that unless they come back the process of normalization in kashmir cannot, cannot. be completed ever so with all this <clears throat> he came to me once and he said uh, he spoke to me about the sharda civilization the whole aspect of sharda teet peet sharda mandir there on the other side and i said it's an atmukam so he was mm. surprised that i knew it that it's an atmukam on the nilam river and um, so he said how did i know it so i said well one fine day i flew very high on the line of control by a helicopter and from the top i saw this thing and i wondered when i when i charted it on my map and said came back and i realized that i have seen the sharda mandir existing on the other side of the line of control and no one has no one visits it you can't have a way of going there so i researched a little bit on the sharda civilization and came to know what an amazing thing this was especially for the kashmiri pandits so he and i became friends aur phir humne socha you know unhone iska movement chalaya pura save sharda shrine shrine i became a member of the save sharda shrine <laughs> committee एंड uh, जहाँ पर भी uh, हमको सेंसिटाइज करने के लिए जाना था लोगों के पास वी वेंट दे एंड स्पोक टू दैम एंड आई आई वॉज द वन हुज टू ऑलवेज पुट फॉरवर्ड दिस पॉइंट दैट आई एम वन ऑफ द फ्यू पीपल हु हैज एक्चुअली सीन दिस मंदिर सो वी लुकड एट प्रपोजल्स टू क्रिएट ए समथिंग लाइक द करतारपुर कॉरिडोर ए स्मॉल कॉरिडोर ऑन द लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल टू अलाउ पीपल टू गो बट वी रियलाइज द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल मे नोवर परमिट दिस टू हैपन So what the Vinda Pandita has actually done is that he's gone as close as possible to the uh, original Sharda temple, and uh, he has constructed at Tithwal hmm. this mandir, which is a uh, effort of his own and with the uh, with the help of a lot of many other people. To, uh, he's put that together, and he came back and showed me the photograph and said, "This is what I have done." What I did was I facilitated by requesting the army. all successive core commanders division commanders in kupwara 
have put their efforts into it and given sanction to it. So I think it's a great achievement that we had done together. And that's why when I saw that uh, the government has done so much for Muharram, hmm. Eighth Muharram um, procession has come out in in uh, Srinagar, and I was one who was encouraging the procession of Muharram in Uri. There are many Shia villages in Uri, uh, in in uh, Patan and places like that. I knew it was very difficult to do this in uh, Srinagar because Srinagar was a sensitive area, and besides that, the security situation was such no one could ever guarantee that not something cannot go wrong with it. This year, I think the Lieutenant Governor has taken a big risk. But a very bold decision he has taken to go ahead, go ahead with it, and he himself participated in it. Mm. So when I saw all this, I said, I think the people of Kashmir should know this sentiment that I appreciate what the Lieutenant Governor has done hugely. But I also want to say that while I appreciate the Muharram procession coming out in Srinagar, I must also convey my sensitivity towards the fact that I would love to go to the line of control again. To uh, do a mathateko at the uh, Shah, at the Shada shrine, which uh, Ramanda Pandita has put in there, so a lot of people appreciated this hmm. because this is in keeping with the typical syncretic culture of India for something which I have always believed in. As to your Jayabadri Vishal question, Jayabadri Vishal has been a part of us. You see, my father is from the same regiment. I am from the same regiment. What is Badri Vishal? A lot of people ask this question. What is Badri Vishal? So we have to just tell them. It is just another name. It's a personification for Lord Vishnu. The seat is at Badrinath, Badrinath. and uh, traditionally, whoever heads the regiment goes there every year to lay the bell, put the chimes of the bell, and tell the regiment that he has been there. And the whole regiment then uh, perceives that nothing can go wrong with the activities of the regiment for the whole year. So, uh, in in uh, battle, we. Our war cry is actually not Jai Badri Vishal. Our war cry is Badri Vishal Lal ki Jai, which means victory be to the sons of yeah, Badri, Badri Vishal, Vishal or the followers of Badri Vishal. We are the followers of Badri Vishal of Lord hmm. Vishnu. So today I am very proud to say that uh, my Sahayak who was in the army with me is employed by me also today, and he gives me a cup of tea every morning and first. I think for the last ten years, the first thing in the morning, which I have always said, is Jai Badri Vishal, because he comes and wishes me Jai Badri Vishal. I wish him Jai Badri Vishal. So it's a part of my life, and I have never had any hesitation of saying this aloud, and will never probably ever have that hesitation. Thank you. Uh, after thirty-four years, the procession was carried out in Kashmir. What do you think? Why it took so long in between e these thirty-four years, and why has it become had become impossible over these years? You see, um, the terrorist cadres, separatists who were supporting them, overground workers, etc., who were all put together, looking for this separatism of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, always wanted big acts to take place. Now you see, one of the biggest acts was the targeting of Kashmiri pundits hmm. itself. Today, this that capability is not there, so they go after small settlements. One Kashmiri pundit, one Sikh, hmm. or one um, Kashmiri soldier, hmm. or a policeman, or something like that. Right now, in those days, we had three to four thousand terrorists roaming around in Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, to take a yatra, to take a procession, which is like a yatra only, anyone could have come and uh, thrown a grenade or detonated an IED or something like that. And if you had mass casualties, it would have created mayhem, uh, not in India itself, but internationally. Hmm. No one likes to take a risk. When you are in a security situation of this kind, no one likes to take risk. And therefore, it was fully justified, I think, that modern Processions could not take place at that time. Although, let me also state that the Shia Muslims of Kashmir were never very happy about this um, restriction on them. That is why, all the more reason now, I think we can say with pride that four years after the decisions of fifth of August, uh, I think the government has been able to take such a bold decision because they think that they have got terror well under control at the mm. moment. Although. The the potential of bounce back is always there. Always. Everything is not over yet. Sentiments are not completely uh, vanished or vaporized, but uh, it's important to progressively move in small, you know, mm -hmm. small movements go further. And I think the Shia procession 
the Muharram procession is one of those very, very big actions that the left government has been able to achieve. Thank you so much, sir, for being here with us today. This conversation has been highly intriguing and I hope this would be enlightening for our viewers as well. Thank you so much. Happy Independence Day. Thank you very much. I mean, it's been wonderful, absolutely. And let me also wish all our viewers Happy Independence Day.